Planets have been found orbiting all kinds of stars, stars like the Sun, stars brighter and fainter than the Sun, and even there are some planets that orbit two suns. However, scientists have announced the first planet to be found orbiting a brown dwarf. A scientist and his best friend discussing the chances for life on other planets, except, they are not from Earth. They are on a parallel Earth from a distant corner of the universe, orbiting in a brown dwarf's habitable zone. They sit on old wooden chairs in a small wooden cabin, with weed pipes on their hands, and there is the starry sky and the giant, looming brown dwarf. Quite like a Middle Earth feeling, right? Welcome to our odyssey through space and time, and today we ponder the question, what if Earth orbits a brown dwarf? But before starting the hypothesis part, let's be familiar with these interstellar objects. In order to understand what is a brown dwarf, we need to understand the difference between a star and a planet. Stars form from a cloud of contracting gas, and the temperature in its core becomes so massive that, hydrogen begins to fuse into helium, releasing an enormous amount of energy which causes the star to begin shining under its own power. However, a planet forms from small particles of dust, left over from the formation or a destruction of a star, planet or from a rocky space object. Eventually, these particles collide and stick together, and forms a grey and molten rivered rock. But there is not enough temperature, and not enough hydrogen to cause particles to fuse and release energy. In other words, a planet is not hot enough or heavy enough to produce its own light. The difference between brown dwarfs and stars is that, unlike stars, brown dwarfs do not reach stable luminosities by thermonuclear fusion of normal hydrogen. Yet, both stars and brown dwarfs produce energy by fusion of deuterium in their first few billion years, and then, the cores of stars continue to contract and get hotter until they fuse hydrogen. However, brown dwarfs prevent further contraction, because their cores are dense enough to hold themselves up for the rest of their lives. In other words, brown dwarfs begin to fuse hydrogen at first, but then they stabilize and the fusion stops. When it comes to sizes and masses, these failed stars are objects which have a size between a giant planet, like Jupiter, and that of a small star. In fact, most astronomers would classify any object with between 15 to 90 times mass of Jupiter to be a brown dwarf. With given range of masses, these brown dwarfs won't be able to sustain the fusion of hydrogen like a regular star. Thus, many scientists have dubbed these interstellar objects as failed stars. Although, brown dwarfs are not actually brown but appear from deep red to magenta, depending on their temperature. Starting in 1995, astronomers have been able to detect a few nearby brown dwarfs, and all of them so far are parts of a binary system. For a side note, a binary system is one in which two stars orbit around one another, just like the planets of our solar system orbit our sun. Now comes a great window for hosting life around brown dwarf systems. The core temperatures of brown dwarfs could be below about 3 million degrees, as at this temperature fusion becomes sustainable. However, the surface temperatures of brown dwarfs depend on both their mass and their age. The most massive and youngest brown dwarfs could have temperatures as high as 2,800 kelvins, which is almost half to our sun's surface temperature, which counts around 5,800 kelvins. So, as the brown dwarfs can emit heat and light for the few billion years of their lifetime, yes, as far as we know, a planet orbiting a brown dwarf could host life. But the case is, brown dwarfs are cooler than the sun, so their habitable zones are located much closer in, somewhat at just a few percent of the Earth's sun distance, which is defined as one astronomical units. So now as our Earth orbits a brown dwarf, our Earth would put the orbital distance at about 0.005 astronomical units. If our real Earth's orbit was the same size, that would put us on the surface of the Sun, since it is a ridiculously small orbit. But when brown dwarfs reach the minimum main sequence stellar temperature, like about 1800 kelvins, all brown dwarfs eventually start to cool down. In 2011, the NASA WISE Explorer discovered six extremely cool brown dwarfs known as Y dwarfs, which have temperatures as low as 300 kelvin, which is the temperature of the human body and so on, when they spend their time cooling off, contracting and getting fainter, which means that, the habitable zone moves inward, as the dwarf growing old. So, any planet's time in the habitable zone is limited, but many planets can spend upwards of a billion years with the right conditions for life. Another concern is that, any planet that enters the habitable zone spends some time too close to the star, like in the Venus zone, 
A planet close to a brown dwarf feels very strong solar tides, since the only celestial body that governs gravity affairs with a planet like this would be only the brown dwarf. Because, the gravitational influence from a brown dwarf, not any kind of moon or moons are not stable for planets close to these failed stars. So, if our Earth placed right in the center of a habitable zone of a brown dwarf, which means that would be the end of our lunar friend. However, we the real Earth people have 24 hours days, since tides of the sun and moon affect the planet's orbit and spin. If we lost moon and placed in so close to a brown dwarf, the planet's obliquity is quickly driven to zero, such that the equator is lined up with the orbital plane, and orbit becomes perfectly circular, and the Earth could tidally lock and always shows the same face to the star. So, what would be different? First, as we already discussed, the brown dwarf would always appear in the same place in the sky, and it would be huge, like about 20 times larger than the Sun, because the planet's orbit is 200 times closer than Earth's orbital distance. It could be as big as a softball held at arm's reach, and that softball is just hanging there in the sky, all the time, because the face of the planet would be fixed with the star. Quite a magnificent view, right? Nope. Earth's sky is blue, because the atmosphere scatters blue light more strongly than red light. But a brown dwarf emits no blue light, and also, it barely emits any visible light at all, since brown dwarf's energy is mainly radiated at infrared wavelengths of light. There is pretty much no scattering of the light from a brown dwarf, so to our eyes, the atmosphere would be basically transparent. So, say goodbye to the blue sky. But, because of their low temperatures and small sizes, brown dwarfs have extremely low luminosities, about a hundred thousand times lower than the solar luminosity. Which means, on a planet which is orbiting a brown dwarf, there would be no photosynthesis, such, there would be no life at all. But it still remains is a question, so, don't drop your hopes down. And in the other hand, the surface of a habitable planet orbiting a brown dwarf is always illustrated the same, so, the climate would probably be very consistent. But this is not quite as simple as it seems, because the planet is also spinning around its own axis. To always keep the same face pointed toward the star, the planet needs to spin once per orbit, and a planet in the habitable zone orbits, its brown dwarf host in as little as 8 hours. On average it takes more like a day, so even though, the planet is always facing its star, it spins at about the same rate as Earth. No one has modeled the climate of this kind of planet, so we don't know exactly what it would be like. But, if you are a conspiracy theorist, just leave a comment regarding this topic. Is there any chance for life around a brown dwarf? A couple of planets have been discovered around brown dwarfs, but those planets are too big and too cold for life. So. What fraction of brown dwarfs have a potentially habitable planet? Actually, yet, we don't know. About half of all red dwarf stars have a planet in the habitable zone, with a fraction is at least 5 to 10% for sun-like stars. But, for brown dwarfs, these numbers could be below than 0.5%. So far as we know, dead and failed stars known as brown dwarfs can give off heat, that can warm up worlds, and also, they are bright enough to support habitable zones around them, which is warm enough for planets to sustain liquid water on their surfaces. As such, worlds orbiting them might be able to support alien life as we know it, because Earth's life was formed with the help of water, and as there is life somewhere, there is water on Earth. But, as we said, brown dwarfs' cooling natures and harsh light make them unlikely to host life. NASA's WISE spacecraft and other telescopes have recently discovered hundreds of brown dwarfs, raising the possibility of detecting exoplanets circling them, so maybe, we could find new life forms somewhere around them. But the lower luminosities make them extremely difficult to observe, even with modern telescopes, it is almost impossible to observe brown dwarfs more distant than two or three hundred light years. However, currently observations suggest that, these failed stars are also responsible for the missing mass of the Milky Way. So, here comes the end of our adventure. Click the subscribe button, and also, make sure you click on the little bell, so you don't miss another video ever again, because we've got a new one coming out every week.